What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Roblox Simulator Series. In today's episode of the Simulator Series, we are going to be going over how to create group rewards for your simulator. Now as always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, you guys go check that out and support me. With that being said, let's get right into it. To quickly showcase the feature that I'm referring to, we just joined the Eating Simulator, which is a simulator that we're sort of recreating and we can see right here we have a group chest which says ready to open now when i step on it it actually says like the game plus join the group it says the group name to unlock this so this actually wants me to go to their game page and join their specific group and let's go do that real quick so on their game page it is made by their group so we can click on the group click on join group and now we are in the group if we now rejoin the game step on the group chest once again we can see we actually are rewarded a gui pops up says chest to open come back tomorrow for more awesome rewards gives us a little bit of a reward and then we have a cooldown. It's very similar, practically identical to the daily chest that we made in the last episode. And that's what we're going to be sort of doing. With this episode, we're going to be kind of continuing from what we learned in the last episode, reusing some of that stuff, and just adding on the specific things for the group system. So now that we understand what we're going to be creating in this episode, let's actually create a group on the Roblox website because we're obviously going to need that for this. So to create a group on Roblox, you just go to roblox.com slash group slash create. And now you're able to create your own group, but it costs 100 Robux. So once you input all the information that you want to and you create the group you're then able to get the group id if you want to do this for a pre-existing group you can click on the groups button right here and you can view all of the groups that you're inside of and click whichever one that you want to use most likely it's going to be the one that you own and my group for example is called euphoric games now if i look in the url we can see roblox.com slash groups slash and then eight numbers slash the group name hashtag and then a little bit more in the url what we want to do is we want to copy those numbers and we basically want to save these somewhere so we remember them for later because that's how we're going to identify what group the player needs to be in for the rewards. So now that we got the group created, we got the group ID, let's go back into studio and actually start setting things up. Now inside of the studio, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to recreate the daily chest that we have right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to duplicate this. Like I said, I'd highly recommend that you guys go back and watch the previous episode, which covered the entire process that we're going to sort of go over once again today, but in more detail. Today, we're basically going to brush over all the stuff that we learned in the last episode and then expand upon it. Anyways, now that we got the chest duplicated, what we're going to do is drag it over a little bit. We are going to rename that from daily reward to group reward. We're then going to go inside of the billboard GUI and we want to change the title from displaying daily chest to group chest and we probably want the color to be blue if we're trying to match eating simulators so a nice little light blue like that and i'm not going to adjust the entire model to be blue we're not really focusing on modeling and stuff like that in this series it's mostly about scripting and learning how to do that stuff anyways we now have our group reward model set up what we then want to do is we want to go inside of the server script service inside of the scriptable object script we can see this is where we actually listen to the daily reward touch part getting touched and did all of that stuff right inside of here what we can pretty much do is we could just copy and paste this function right here and then instead of the daily reward we of course want to use the group reward part and that's of course going to have the touch part because we just duplicated the daily reward part anyway now inside of here we're comparing the current time to the player's cooldown which is the player dot daily reward instead of daily reward what we're going to do is we're going to say group reward and we can replace all of the daily reward instances with that and we can also replace this daily reward instance right here so we're going to set the group reward value to the cooldown which is going to be 24 hours which is 86,400 seconds and then right here is where we're actually firing the daily reward remote we probably are going to create a new remote to handle the group rewards, but we're basically going to handle it the same way. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up the player data because we don't actually have the group reward player data set up. So what we're going to do is inside of the player data script, we can hit control F and just search for all instances of daily reward. And we can pretty much know that we just need to duplicate this data and then just rename it to group reward. So we're going to hit control H and replace the word daily with the word group. So group, group, group. And we need to make sure that the G here is capitalized. So there we go. And then right down here, we're going to duplicate that. And instead of daily, we are going to say group reward. And we'll just copy paste that, copy paste that, copy paste that. And then once again, we have that right here. So we can say replace that with group and now group. There we go. And then we're going to copy and paste this. So now we have group reward equals group reward. And there we go. Now all the data is handled exactly the same way that we handle the daily reward. So that's all perfectly fine. We just basically had to make sure that everything we did for the daily reward we also did for the group reward as well so now back inside of the scriptable objects we see once we touch this part and now we actually have this data which is perfect and then we're able to actually set the cooldown because we now have that data as well right here is where we're giving the player the reward maybe since they joined our group what we want to do is we need to give them like 
5,000 instead of just 1,000. So we can change the amount right there. And we should also change this from 1,000 to 5,000 as well. And also this is something that I thought of too. Instead of writing this number two times, what we should do is just create a variable for it real quick. So we can say local reward equals 1,000. Now the reason that I'm creating the variable inside of here is because most likely you're probably gonna wanna base the reward off of a certain player stat. Because imagine if a player is level one and you give them 1,000 coins, right? That's perfectly fine. But if you give a player that's level 100 1,000 coins, that's not a good incentive to make them wanna actually get the daily reward. Reward. Instead of giving them 1,000 coins, you probably want to give them 100,000 coins or something in that regard for the reward to actually be rewarding. So considering this reward is static and it's never actually changing, what would be a better idea is probably creating the variable up here and then we would make it a static variable and we would put that in all caps and then instead of saying 1,000, we would say the reward, the reward, and we could actually even rename this if we wanted to. So from reward to daily daily reward. Oh, we're actually messing that up. So all I'm going to do is simply paste, paste, paste. There we go. So now it's daily reward. And then if we want to do the same thing for the group reward, we can do that as well. So group reward is going to equal, let's just say 5,000 instead. And then we'll put that right there, put that right there. And there we go. Now we don't have to repeat the number. We just have to put the variables where they need to go. And that works good. Like I said, if you guys are going to be basing the reward off of a player's level, obviously create the reward variable inside of here. You don't have to create the variable outside because you really can't. The next thing that we want to do is we might as well make a new remote event so inside of the replicated storage instead of remotes we have the daily reward remote event we're just going to duplicate that and rename it to group reward so now that we have group reward we can just copy and paste that there so now this is going to fire the group reward remote event and it's going to fire it with the group reward and it's going to fire it similarly to the daily reward so what we want to do now is inside of the if player then we want to say if player semicolon is in group and now we need to pass through the group id which is the eight numbers that we got from the URL before and mine was this number right there. So if the player is in that group, then, and now we actually want to move this if statement inside of this if statement. So if the player is in the group, then we're going to check their time and compare it. And then we might give them a reward. Otherwise we're going to say that they have to wait the 24 hours. But now if the player is not in the group, we want to notify them to join the group to get the reward. So if the player is not in the group, that's what this else statement is saying right here. Then we want to tell player they're not in the group and there we go so the next thing we should do is go inside of our starter gui inside of the daily reward and we're going to be handling the group reward inside of the daily reward gui the reason for that is because they're practically identical in eating simulator now in your own game you don't need to do exactly everything that i'm doing i'm just telling you why we're doing it in my opinion i don't think it's the best idea to have the daily reward and the group reward all combined into one thing but based off eating simulator situation it's really unnecessary to separate the two so inside of the manager inside of the the daily reward we listen to the daily reward remote event right here what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that instead of just listening to the daily reward event we're going to listen to the group reward event as well and both these are going to call the reward function so whenever we fire this remote off on the server we're going to pass through the group reward or we're not going to pass through any reward and if we don't pass through any reward then it's going to pop up with that little warning frame saying that we're unable to open the chest right now so we really don't have to change anything here this works exactly as it should the only thing that we really need to do is one create the gy to tell the player to actually join the group and also when it comes to displaying the cooldown timer inside of the billboard GUI on the specific chest. So currently we have the daily reward part right up here. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Instead of just saying the daily reward, we'll have the group reward as well. So group reward part, just like that. Now if we look inside of the display time function, we can see that we use the daily reward part right here, right here, and right here. What we're going to do to make this function a little bit more versatile is we are going to create a variable right under here and we're going to say local part equals. And now we're going to say if and inside of this function we want to actually accept an argument and that argument's going to be part for right now it's just actually going to be a string and basically this string is going to either be daily or group so we're going to say if part equals and remember this is a string it's not an actual part so if part equals daily then the part is going to equal this right here so it's going to equal the daily reward part dot billboard gy dot time else it'll equal the group reward part dot billboard gy dot time now instead of using the daily reward part dot billboard gy dot time we're just going to replace all of these with part dot visible equals true part dot text equals the format time and then part dot visible equals false just like that now i want to format this a little bit nicer what i kind of like to do with these if statements is i like to put them on two lines so that it's a little bit easier to look at but you guys don't have to do this it kind of looks a little bit ugly that way i'm not gonna lie but hey i think it's a little bit easier on the eyes to see exactly what's going on here so now when we're listening for the daily reward 
stored value to change, what we're going to do is we're going to pass through daily right here. And then also when we first call this, we want to also pass through daily as well, just like that. But now we also want to do the exact same thing for the group reward. So we're going to duplicate this. We're going to say group reward change because that's the value that we're creating and giving to the player when they first join the game because of how we handle the data. So with this, we're just going to pass through group. Since we call this for daily, we're also going to call it for group as well. And we're just going to pass through group and that should be good to go. So let's go ahead, test out the basic functionalities of this. Let's start up our game. We load in and we see it. We have the group chest and the daily chest. Let's go ahead, step on the daily chest. We get a notification that pops up, says the chest was open. And if we step on it again, we see we get the notification that we can't open it right now. Then if we go over to the group chest and open it up, the time pops up for that as well. And we see that we got the 5k. So that works perfectly. Now, one of the things that you might've noticed is that both of the cooldown displays for the group chest and the daily reward chest are exactly the same. And that's actually because we forgot to change the cooldown that we set right here. And that's because the cooldown is actually just the daily rewards currently. So what we want to do is basically the exact same thing that we did down here. So if part equals daily, then we're going to listen to the daily reward value. Otherwise we'll listen to the group reward value. So we're just going to copy this if statement, paste it right there, and then just change the values. If daily, then the cooldown actually equals that else it'll equal that. So group reward. So if part equals daily, then it'll be the daily reward. Otherwise it's going to be the group reward value that we'll listen to for the cooldown. There's one more issue in this particularly that when we start our game, if we look, we see that we have the daily chest cooldown displayed, but we don't have the group chest cooldown displayed. And the reason for that is because where we call the display time for the daily, we call daily first, and then we call group second. When we call display time, we actually have a while loop running, which will continuously run until the cooldown has expired. Now, the issue with this is that once this function is called, it's going to go through all of this code right here. If it makes it down to the while loop and the while loop is continuously running, then display time group is never going to be reached until the while loop breaks. And then once the while loop breaks, first part dive visible is going to become false. And then since this function's done, it's going to continue back down to here and then it'll run display time for group. Now there's two ways to handle this. One, we could wrap our function calls inside of task.spawn, which I went over this in the last episode. This will basically spawn a new thread for this function to actually run on. So now when task.spawn and then this function is called, the code's not going to stall. It's going to see this, it's going to do this, and then instantly go to the display time dot group and not wait for the display time function to finish processing. So if we start a game, we can see this works as it should. The other way to handle this is rather than wrapping our function call inside of the task.spawn, which realistically we should do it for both of these display dot times, just in case we for some reason forgot, or if we ever added something below this display time group and we forgot that we needed to add a task.spawn, we might be debugging for a little bit. And I think it's good to stay organized and wrap them both in task.spawn calls. The alternative solution would be to wrap everything in your function in a task.spawn. So we could say task.spawn and then function, create a new function, and then put everything from inside of here into here. And this works too, but it really just depends on whatever you want to do. The only difference between the two is that we're using task.spawn right here. So now we can call this function whenever we want to without actually having to worry about using task.spawn again. So it is more convenient, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do works. One thing you might be curious of though, is that why do we not need to wrap the display time function calls inside a dot change with the task.spawn? The simplest way to think about this is that whenever you listen to an event, imagine that they're basically wrapped in task.spawns already. So whatever you connect to an event is not going to be stalled and it'll basically be spawned on its own thread. So you don't have to use task.spawn inside of it because it basically already exists. That might not be technically correct, but hopefully I explained it in a way that you guys understand it. Anyway, with all that being said, let's start up our game again and make sure that the cooldowns work and everything's all good. So we can see the cooldowns are being displayed. If we step on this, it says you cannot claim this chest right now. And it says the same for this one as well. So that works all good. The last thing that we want to do is we want to create the GY the player will see when they're not in the group and we want to tell them to join the group. So inside of our daily reward we already have the notification frame we're just going to duplicate that make it visible so we can see it and then we're going to modify it a little bit because it looks very similar to the frame which they have that tells the player to join the group so we're just going to rename this frame to group because we know that that is telling the player to join the group you can rename it to whatever you feel comfortable with then let's actually resize this a little bit it's a little bit larger so probably something like that the position of it we of course want that to be centered again so there we go now the title we're going to adjust the title to say thumbs up emoji like game plus join group and there we go we probably want to move this up just a tiny bit something like that looks pretty good and then we'll actually duplicate the title we'll bring it down just a little 
bit and just something like that. We'll probably adjust it again in a second. Then we want to rename this label to group and this is going to be the group name. So the name of our group is going to just be yum for this example. So there we go. And they have the color of their text a little bit different. So it's like a pink and that looks pretty good. And then we can just delete the reward and the message and we'll just simply copy the title once again, bring this down to here. And this bottom text is we're just going to rename this to bottom because the text label doesn't really matter that much. And this is going to be to unlock this exclamation mark. So there we go. We've got that. We might also want to increase the size of the group name. So there we go. That works. And then we want to add an image label inside of here so we can resize the image label a little bit. We want to make sure that the image label is scaled. So 0.5 comma 0.5, something like that. That looks good. And then we want to move it around a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and center it real quick. So 0.5 comma 0.5, 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0. There we go. And now let's just resize this a little bit. So stretch it out like that. Taller. Okay, there we go. Once again, resize it to the center. Mm, actually, we want to bring it down a little bit. So let's just say like that and like that. There we go. And then we, of course, want to add our image to it. And we could just rename this to image. It doesn't really matter. And now, of course, we want to add our image to it, which would be like our logo for our group. But you guys can do whatever you want with it. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. And then also for the exit button, it looks a little ugly. I kind of want to stretch it out a little bit more like that. So I think that looks pretty good. And then let's check the mobile view to make sure everything is scaled correctly. It's all scaled correctly. So that works perfectly. Awesome. So now what we can do is we could go back inside of the manager and handle all the work of that GUI inside of here. Rather than doing that, I'm going to be a little bit more organized, although kind of less organized considering that we put some of the group handling code into this, but that's just because it does all the same stuff. Anyway, uh, we're actually going to handle that GUI in its own local script over here. So I'm just going to copy the basic variables that we normally use. And actually, I want to include this exit button click right there as well, because that's what we're going to use too. So now we don't need the parts inside of here. We do want to use the remotes because we're going to listen for a remote. We don't need the format number. We might want the player. We want the GUI. We don't want the notification frame though. We want the group frame. So we're going to say daily reward GUI dot group. And we're going to say group frame. And we have the exit button. So group frame dot exit button. And then we don't have any reward text. We just need the exit button. That's it. And we also don't need the warning neither. So now whenever we click the exit button, we actually want to make the group frame not visible. So just like that. And now we should create another remote inside of here to tell the player to actually join the group. So we could call this like group join join group. I'm just going to call it group join, I guess, just because it fits the theme of group reward. So we're then going to say remotes.groupjoin.on client event connect. And we'll just create a function inside of here. And then all we're going to do is we are going to make the group frame dot visible equals true. So the player is able to see the frame whenever they get this notification. And then back inside of the scriptable object script, what we're going to do. So first we check if the player is found. And then if the player is found, we check if they're in the group. And if the player is not in the group, we then want to tell them to join the group. So we're going to use this we're just, we'll just copy this remote right here and we'll say instead of group reward we're going to say group join and we're just going to fire the client and then on the client we'll listen to that and set the visibility to be true so now just to test this out real quick i'm just going to switch this if statement so that even if we are in the group it thinks that we're not just so we can see the notification gui pop up and actually we need to make that not visible when the game starts up but let's go ahead step on the group chest and we can see we actually have an error in the client at line 17 so let's go look at that real quick so line 17 group frame does not have this property oh it's because we spelled visible wrong Duh. Okay. So now we start the game up. Hopefully that will work. So step on this and we can see like game plus join group. That's our group name to unlock this. And then of course the picture would appear here and that works exactly as eating simulator does. So that's perfect. What we then want to do is we want to make sure that we set this frame to not visible when it shouldn't be. And we also want to reset this if statement that I just changed to do a little bit of debugging and make sure everything works. And the final thing that we want to do is inside of the player data, we want to reset the data real quick so we can test this and make sure that it all works out as it should with the fresh start. So we just want to the game. Neither are displaying cooldowns. We'll step on daily chest first and we can see the chest has been open. We got 1k. The cooldown is now displayed. Let's step on group chest. We can see cooldown displayed. We got 5k. The GUI pops up. And if we try to step on either of these, it says you cannot claim this chest right now. Let's stop our game. Let's start our game and make sure that the data is saved and it still persists. And yeah, it still works. It looks all good and it's working exactly as it should. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. It was pretty simple and easy to do, especially if you guys watched the last episode. The only difference was just making an if statement for handling 
seeing if the player was in the group or not. Anyways, with that being said, hopefully this video did help you guys out. If it did or you guys did enjoy it, make sure you slash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to gain access to all the scripts and the game file I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description. You guys go check it out and support me. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.